Welcome back as we continue our exploration of the digestive system. We're still going to stay in the head and neck area. And on this video, we're going to learn about the teeth and your salivary glands. So we in lab are only going to be learning about adult teeth, your permanent teeth. And what we have is we have 32 teeth. So you've got 16 on the top and 16 on the bottom. And if you do a mid-sagittal cut, you're gonna have the same eight in each of the four quadrants. And that's why eight times four is 32. So you have eight teeth, but there's only four types of teeth. So the easy thing would be, oh, there's two of each, except that's not right, okay? So the four types of teeth and the eight teeth. So this is an overview slide where you have them all sitting there next to each other. And we're gonna talk about differences in shape as well as where they are in location. And so a location is very easy because you would just start at the midline and then you just start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you know exactly which one's which. But you need to be able to recognize them by shape. And this is showing how the teeth would appear in your maxilla, where this is showing how the teeth would appear in your mandible. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first teeth from the midline, the first two in each place is called an incisor. So yes, your textbook, they talk about the central incisor and the lateral incisor, we don't care. We're just gonna call them both incisor. When you look at an incisor, what you will notice it has one root. It kind of looks like an upside down ice cream cone, doesn't it? Okay, so it's got one root that really narrows down. And when you look at the exposed part of the tooth, the part that is white, the front of it is straight and the back is scalloped in so that up here on the top, it is very thin. And so that's what's characteristic about an incisor. Moving laterally and posteriorly, so we've done the first two teeth. So the third tooth on each side, and there's only one of them, is called a canine. So its root also looks like the upside down pointed ice cream cone. But if you look at the white part, the exposed part of your tooth, you'll see that it is pointy as well. So the canine has a totally different shape. Instead of being scalloped and have a little skinny edge like a knife for cutting, this one is a poker. So it's going to be doing some ripping, all right? And there's only one canine and they're called canines. They're super prominent on dogs when they bare their teeth. You can see the canines. You also can see them on alligators and crocodiles. Not that I've ever been up close and personal with alligators and crocodiles, take a picture of theirs, but I've seen plenty of pictures, thank you very much. I'll just stay away from that. All right, so that's the first three teeth on each side. The next two, so numbers four and five back on each side, okay. That is called a premolar. Now look at that root, okay. And in that middle picture, you're looking at the root of the one in the maxilla and you're saying, ah, there's two roots. And then you're looking at the one on the bottom, you're going, I only see one, but see how fat it is? Okay, this one is sometimes called a bicuspid because often it has two little roots like the one on top, but many times it doesn't separate into two little roots. The two are actually fused together. So instead of being a little skinny ice cream cone, it makes it super fat, okay? And I will come back and talk about the white part of this tooth in a second because I want to go on and explain the molar first. So the molars, you have three on each side. Okay. And these, as you can see, will always have multiple roots. They'll either have two roots where one is very thick and the other one's a normal size, or it will have three, which is why they're often called the tricuspid. And when you look at the surface of the molar, do you notice that it's flat? I don't mean it's absolutely flat because it has hills and valleys, but it's got a very flat surface like for grinding food as opposed to the incisor which had that cutting or the canine which had the little poking thing in there. All right, so the poking thing was the canine, the molar was the flatter one, and in between the two we had the premolar. And the premolar, the exposed part of the tooth, is basically a mixture of the two. 
when you look at it from some directions, it looks pretty flat and students might think, oh, that's a molar. But then you look down here and you're going, ah, I don't see too much less three roots down there, okay? But then when you look at it from the side, you see this pokiness? Yes, because students also confuse it for a premolar. So anytime you're going to call anything a premolar or a molar, stop and look, sorry, anytime you're going to call anything a canine or a premolar, stop and think, could it possibly be a premolar? I think I said students confuse it for a premolar. This is a premolar. Students confuse it for either a canine or a molar. This is the type of tooth when you're giving the tooth to look at or the picture to look at, this is the one that more students get wrong than all the others combined. Okay, so just Stay focused when you're looking at teeth. All right, so those are the four different type of teeth. So let's move on to the salivary glands. So we have three different locations for salivary glands, which means we have six, because there's three on each side. The first salivary gland sits anterior to your ear, sitting right on top of the masseter muscle, which makes it hard to see the masseter muscle on a lot of the models, okay? So for instance, this is a great one. Do you see this thing sitting right in front of the ear? That is your parotid gland right there. And in lecture, you'll learn the difference in secretions between the three different parotid glands, three different salivary glands, excuse me. And the parotid gland is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine. If you look at the anterior border of the parotid gland, what you will notice is there is a duct. And we just call it the parotid duct. Okay, maybe you missed it before. It's not any of these yellow things. These yellow things, those are the five branches of the facial nerve. So they would never color it yellow. It's got a different color than nerves. So it's this goldenrod kind of, okay, I know goldenrod's shaded yellowish brown. Um, but it's not the same color as the nerve. So you have a parotid duct, and this is the only salivary gland you're going to have to be able to identify the duct. All right, moving on. The next salivary gland, you're going to go inferior to the angle of your mandible where the body meets the ramus, and then you're just going to tuck right inside the angle of the mandible. You see it on the bottom left, how it's tucked right inside. So there's the body, here's the ramus, so you just go tuck right inside. So this one's just inside the mandible. It's called the submandibular gland. It tends to hang down just a little bit below the mandible. And I kind of like various of these models, plus the cadaver where you can see the parotid and you can see the submandibular gland. The same thing on this model. This is um, Giles, I think, and this is a parotid gland, and this is a submandibular gland. And then on this other model, you can clearly see them as well. Now, some models you can open up and look on the inside, and so you'd have to look on the outside to see the parotid gland, but you would not see the submandibular gland until you went on the inside um, because it's hidden by the larynx and things, muscles on the outside. And this one has a different innervation than the parotid gland does. This one's innervated by the facial nerve. And for the third salivary gland, what you're going to do is you are going to stay inside the mandible and you are going to come anterior and then you actually go a little bit towards the midline. Okay. So, that one is directly underneath the tongue, because remember I said you come towards the midline. So it's called the sublingual gland, because lingual means tongue. And this one also is innervated by the facial nerve. So both of these inside the mandible have the same innervation, facial nerve. Okay. And um, this one was the glossopharyngeal nerve. All right, so that's it for teeth and salivary glands, and I will see you shortly as we continue our exploration of the digestive system.